I call Chris Farfoy. If you have a, a copy of the bill in your hand, I will refer directly to it. Um, and, and I wanted to point out um, Clause 3, which uh, are the main purposes of the bill, and I know other members have, uh, have but um, at this stage of the debate, I just want to draw a, th a few strands together of speeches that already have been made. Um, the main purpose, 3A, is to enable eligible entities in New Zealand to interact more easily with government. I don't think anyone in this House uh, has a problem with that. Um, AB, something that is new uh, from the Select Committee stage, is to enable eligible entities in New Zealand to interact more easily with one, with, with one another. I don't think anyone in this House has a problem with that, um, Mr Chair. Uh, B goes on to reduce transaction costs in New Zealand, and I think uh, most, uh, um, most parties in this House would like to reduce the amount of um, impost uh, that businesses have so they can be more profitable. But, uh, no, no problem with that. I, I could go on, but I think um, people have got the gist. Um, the intent of this piece of legislation no one has any problem with. The problem is, and I think the government has missed a trick because we're actually trying to help them achieve these purposes, they need purposes they need uh, in an effective and timely manner, is that um, when, when it has crit been criticising the su supplementary order papers of um, New Zealand First MP Rhea Bond uh, and, uh, and my colleague David Clark, um, they've missed the trick. And um, a contribution from Brett Hudson earlier on in this debate, Mr Chair, gave the game away. Um, because, you know, the government is taking, uh, and we've had this from their side of the uh, House, a year now nah attitude towards this piece of legislation. Yeah, we want to do it, but no, nah, we don't necessarily want to do it. Uh, and that is uh, our concern on this side of the House, is we want to achieve all the things that the government wants to do. We want to help you. We've put, th we've put forward supplementary order papers to make sure that it's effective, it's timely, and that the, the kinds of benefits to businesses and government that you want to achieve actually happen in a good and proper way. But the bill in its current form, as we've said, we feel doesn't change that. Now, when we first started this process, before Mr Hudson got on his feet, we feared, we perceived fear. And that's why we thought we'd bring these supplementary order papers, because as the bills, as we read it, we feared that this, that this legislation wouldn't cut the mustard. Then Mr Hudson got on his feet and admitted that this piece of legislation doesn't cut the mustard, and the government is quite happy that it doesn't cut the mustard. So I'm very confused about the attitude of the government because it says it wants to do all these things for business, Mr Chair. It wants to make them more efficient. It wants to make them more profitable, as it says uh, in Clause 3, the main purposes of this bill. But it isn't backing itself to get there. So we're being helpful with these supplementary order papers. And good on you, Rhea Bond, and good on you, David Clark, for putting these supplementary order papers there to give this piece of legislation just a bit of guts, a bit of guts to make sure that this piece of legislation will affect what the government actually wants to achieve. That's what this is all really about. Um, and there has been concern about the effectiveness of this piece of legislation from one part of uh, our economy that the government usually doesn't pay any attention to, and that's federated farmers. Oh. Uh, and in their submission uh, to the Select Committee, they uh, expressed concern and concerns that we share that the uh, initial list of government departments does not include agencies such as WorkSafe and Immigration. So, hold on a minute, that's what our SAP does. So it's not just us playing politics, it's actually uh, submitters, um, as you know, like Federated Farmers, who have come to the State Committee and said, hey, if you're going to do this, do it properly, and make sure more than just a handful of government departments are included in this. Um, they also um, helpfully suggested that we move things forward and also include local government within the realms of this piece of legislation, which uh, we support uh, on this side of the House. So maybe the government should, should listen to um, Federated Farmers, pick up the red phone, uh, and, and listen to them around this piece of legislation. There's not, we don't agree with Federated Farmers all the time on this side of the House, but on this, uh, on this occasion we do because if the government wants to achieve the efficiencies uh, and the benefits to uh, businesses and the government agencies themselves, then we believe that pushing the boat forward a bit faster and give it, giving it some guts is a good thing. Mr Hudson claimed that on this side of the House 
that we didn't know much about technology. And I believe he's worked in the IT sector, so, and I haven't, Mr Chair. Mr Chair? Uh, Chris Farfoy. And uh, Mr Hudson has worked in the IT sector and Agents. I have not. Okay. So I'm taking a, a rather large risk using um, the next analogy I'm about to use. And that is around the ultra-fast broadband rollout. Ooh. And that is that if we use the, the analogy here is you roll out this ultra-fast broadband cable but you don't really want people to link up to it. Just a few. So you, you don't overcrowd the market, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want to you don't, you don't get too many people connected to it because it might blow the system. Uh, and that's not what this government, funnily enough, is doing with ultra-fast broadband rollout. It is rolling it out down all the streets, we hear it as soon as we, all the time about, you know, it's part of the economic development of our country, we're rolling this ultra-fast broadband, and we want as many people we, we can to connect to it because it's good for our economy. And I can see some parallels here because I saying we're creating this New Zealand business number and because of these reasons we think it's good for business but we only want a few of our government agencies to use it. Not all because we think it might overload the system and they're not ready for it which is another issue in itself. So I think the government is guilty of a slight double standard here and that it wants this piece of legislation out there, it wants businesses to be able to use this business number but in all reality it's not ready for it to be out there and to be effective. And the Chartered Accountants uh, also came to us, Mr Chair, and expressed concern around that. Uh, and they said in their submission, the benefits for business may be overstated without the, the, the mandate for recognition of the uh, business number contained in the original section 34. That without significant uptake, there is risk that the identifier is not integrated and utilised widely and just becomes another number. And that's a phrase that you'll hear during this debate as we continue, because that is what we fear may happen if there isn't a clear sense of purpose and a clear sense of urgency for government departments to sign up to the, uh, the, national, the, the New Zealand business number. Um, there has been talk of why haven't we adopted the IRD number as a New Zealand business number, because um, I think it was um, my colleague, Dr da David Parker, uh, who said that that is that number is already in place? Could could that could that have been uh, could that have been adopted as the identifier instead of uh, um, as, instead of adopting a new business number? That was one that was one submission put up during the select committee stage. So w the question was raised whether this is the most effective way to do it. Now it could be the New Zealand business number business number could be the most effective way to do this. But we don't believe that the government is backing itself in this instance to make sure that it is effective and timely. That's why, to finish up, Mr Chair, um, the SIP in the name of Rhea Bond and David Clark, his amendment to the amendment, should be taken seriously by the government if it really wants this New Zealand business number strategy, apparently there's a strategy, to be effective. Because if you want to help businesses and you want to make them more profitable, then do things properly.